going to talk to you about my favorite irrational number, which is phi, in hopes that it will become your favorite irrational number as well. Um, I know you may already have a favorite, but hear me out. So a quick recap on what makes a number irrational. Um, rational numbers are, uh, uh, can be expressed as a ratio of integers, like 3 fifths or 12 sevenths. Irrational numbers can't be expressed as a ratio and often have unending digits, like the square root of 2. Now, the square root of 2 is actually the first known irrational number. If you remember the Pythagorean theorem, when a and b both equal 1, c equals the square root of 2. Now, Pythagoras at the time thought all numbers were rational, and he freaked out when they discovered the root 2. So he had this cult in ancient Greece. Um, it was a little bit of mathematics, a little bit more philosophy and religion, and he swore his followers to secrecy over the existence of root two. Unfortunately, one of the dudes, Hippasus, he couldn't keep his mouth shut and he told someone about it and the Pythagoreans drowned him. Although um, some versions of the story say they drowned him because he revealed how to construct a dodecahedron inside a sphere. But in any case, he had a big mouth and there was a mathematical murder and I don't know why people say math is boring because it's not. Um, thank you. So, there, there are other um, irrational numbers like E. So E is the base of the natural logarithm, but it was discovered by Jacob Bernoulli, who was trying to figure out how to calculate continuously compounding interest. He wanted to get rich. Um, but E was actually uh, got its notoriety and its name by another mathematician, Leonard Euler. Now, Euler uses E in his famous identity, E to the i pi plus 1 is equal 0, which is amazing. It's got two irrational numbers, one imaginary one, and both of the binary digits. I mean, it's sexy, okay? <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. Um, but E is beloved by nerds, uh, but it's actually not very well known by normals. It, it probably had its peak in the pop culture when Google IPO'd in 2004 and they offered E billion dollars, um, which meant at least for one 24-hour news cycle, the anchors on CNBC talked about an irrational number. Um, so that brings us to now the most famous of the irrational numbers, which is pi. Um, and you get that from the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Now, pi is obviously very useful in mathematics, trigonometry, geometry, fractals, cosmology. Um, and it's fine. I would say it's probably overrated. Um, you know, <laughs> math nerds uh, like to celebrate it in America on March 14th by eating, well, pi, and also pie-shaped objects like um, pizza and cheesecake. Uh, but international nerds celebrate it on the 22nd of July, since 22 seven is the closest rational approximation of pi. Um, so I, I think pi has been a little overexposed recently. I mean, it has a badge on Foursquare. It had a really bad movie made in its honor. Um, I, I know, I know. Uh, and, you know, nerds uh, that are wannabe nerds post about it on social media. I, I just, I think it's too much, unlike phi the best. So do you remember that problem in grade school where the bunnies have sex and make more bunnies? Yeah, so first there's one pair, and then two, and three, and five, and eight, and 13, and so on. Okay, so that's uh, this infinite sequence that was either made famous by an Italian mathematician named Fibonacci, or the author of the Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown, depending on whom you read, no judgment. Um, so that, that sequence approximates phi at its limit. Um, which is, you know, kind of awesome. Now, phi is sometimes pronounced phi by pretentious mathematicians trying to make everyone else feel stupid, um, but it's also known as the golden ratio, and it's considered the most beautiful proportion. So it's found in architecture, in places like the Parthenon. Um, phi is also found in art, uh, in the works of Leonardo da Vinci and Salvador Dali. In Dali's Sacrament of the Last Supper, you see phi in its overall proportions, uh, the positioning of the table, even the dodecahedron behind the Christ figure. Dali wasn't exactly subtle. Um, you also can find phi in music in the works of composers like Bella Bartok and Claude Debussy, where they put phi, um, the climax of the uh, piece, in the phi position. Dali and Debussy actually left writings pointing out their intentionality of including phi in their work. But in addition to man-made constructions like music, art, and architecture, you find phi in the natural world. In, in places like the construction of the human body, where you can find phi in the measurements of the placement of your eyes or the positioning of your belly button compared to your overall height. Phi is a basic building block of nature, and once you know it exists, you can't help but see it everywhere, from the conch shell spirals to the pattern of sunflower seeds um, to how branches are, are laid out on trees and veins in leaves. Phi is amazing. So why should it be your favorite irrational number? Three reasons. It is more useful than the square root of 2, it is more famous than e, and it is more beautiful than pi. Um, I think phi is, is fabulous. So, um, you know, in the end, uh, I guess the argument is phi is this constant that brings together art, music, nature, uh, the man-made world, the natural world. It is a rallying cry for a multidisciplinary approach to life. It is my favorite irrational number, and I hope it will be yours too. Thank you very much.